Steve Mayer is here from the Northtown Neighborhood News Magazine, a presentation of the Northtown Community Council. Okay, one of the 1998 National, well, international, oh, sorry, the International Alliance for Community Media for Best News Show. Yes. Our next guest on the theme of Y2K, we have a neighborhood, somebody who grew up in the neighborhood, so has a lot to do in the neighborhood, and is now the president of the Water Reclamation District of Greater Chicago, i.e. When you flush, that's his job. We're talking to President Terry O'Brien. Thanks, Abby. Terry, how you doing? Good. Pleasure to be here. Okay, my pleasure, too. And uh, we're not so much worried about whether the fish have uh, invented ships and they're going to go dead and live near Y2K. But, okay, we're talking, like, it's 1999. I just remembered all these questions I didn't ask, but that's okay. To our previous guest, but that's uh, um, What do we have to worry about? Now, clean water, of course, is the difference between dysentery and cholera. Waterborne diseases. Right, which are numerous. Right? Civilizations, populations, you name it. Exactly. And um, so what do we have to worry about or not worry about? Well, uh, we've been at it for now for two years. Uh, we're trying to get into compliance with a lot of our systems. Uh, the fortunate thing about our agency is that we can switch over on a manual basis. And um, uh, not only that, but our system is basically a gravity feed type of system. So everything flows downhill. Okay. Uh, we don't need the pumping. That uh, some of the other facilities may, or the, say the water department supplies your domestic uh, water for you. Well, one of the things you told me that we might not even know if the automatic stuff goes out of whack, you guys can just turn to manual. We never know. Yeah, what we've done uh, this year is we've added some additional personnel to our budget. Um, only an increase of about three personnel, but we added uh, about eight positions for treatment plant operators and two for operating engineers. Um, because we do have the concern that, you know, if for whatever reason, you know, the failure is not on our part, but the fact that we can't get electricity in our plant, uh, we have to have people that are knowledgeable and help to run that plant on a manual basis. So we brought them on at the beginning of the year to start training them to, to become familiar with our operations and to uh, be able to uh, take over on a manual basis if we need. Now, in terms of your computers, how far along are you with them or with the swipe? Y2K, which, by the way, is the computer bug that will make your computer go completely if you're not set for it in year 2000. As I said, it's switching from 1999 to 2000, it'll say 00, which may or may not affect you, but don't get too alarmed. How far along are you guys? We're in good shape. Uh, we figure by the end of February we should have everything in line. Um, one of the things that we're talking about doing from a treatment plant uh, operation is maybe the week before uh, going on to, to manual operations. And then wait till the week after the New Year's Eve or the New Year's Day with the change of the millennium is uh, stay on manual and gradually bring the system back on board. Uh, and that's one of the things that we're entertaining right now rather than, you know, let it go on a man across the, across the millennium structure. Well, basically, because even though it sounds like some things are going to be okay, why add one more uh, heading to the problem if things don't work? Exactly. Exactly. And like I said, we, you know, we're going to be dependent on some of the other utilities to uh, the gas company, the electric company. Um, so, I mean, if, if they're not up to speed, which you know, I'm hearing that they are, and they will be, um, then we should be in good shape from the automated standpoint. That's pretty much what I'm hearing. All of our previous guest, Beth Bowman, who's the city on Y2K, we'll get her back on uh, shortly. And uh, I'll push some updates on people's gas, communist, I mean, carbon, pump medicine, and um, can't resist that. Can't resist that at all. Um, Got to ask you one non Y two K question. Okay. okay. And by the way, I want to just tell people this dates back way before Terry uh, was not only head of the sanitary district before he voted. Okay. Um, I've got a bunch of friends who live up around Howard and McCormick who keep complaining about the smells that come from there. And I admit they talk to Ergo his way. They've been living there 31 years, and there's always something that happens at some point, usually during the summer. And I've had too many people ask me to ask you this, so i got to ask you, you know, what is that thing? What happened? I mean, this last summer was an unusual dry, unusually dry summer. And when you don't get a flush of rain through the system, a lot of the raw sewage becomes stagnated. It starts to develop hydrogen sulfide and, and starts emitting the gas out of the sewers. And that's what you're, what the neighbors are probably smelling. Yeah, part of our operations, uh, which we're looking into right now, could have been the cause of the situation. And we're trying to identify and, and try to rectify some of those, uh, those problems that we may have. And by the way, is this something that one of your new plans, and by the way, we do plan to take advantage of you for, we want to see the drilling we talked about last time on the deep tunnel. We'd like to see the new plans. Would a new plan take care of that, or would it still be the same problem? Well, no, it's all, our process is strictly biological. So, I mean, whether you go to the Northside plant or you go to our Stinky plant or the Calumet plant or even out to one of our more modern facilities, the James Curie plant displays, it's just the same method. We're 
Thanks so much. 